Let's talk about Rainbow Six lore. This is something myself and many of my viewers are passionate about. To this day, I still get comments from people not even realizing this game has a story behind it. I mean, should it have a story behind it? It's a competitive multiplayer shooter, which does have forms of single player, but is extremely lackluster and hardly tells a story on its own. Now, it isn't a surprise that this game has a story behind it. I mean, it comes from a line of narrative driven games, which were originally adapted from a novel by Tom Clancy. And it seems like a lot of people have forgotten at its core, Rainbow Six is a story driven franchise. And yes, like I said, Rainbow Six Siege is a multiplayer only game, but even at launch, it did have narrative behind it. Rainbow was a deactivated squad since their last adventure, in which we do not know how that happened. However, what we do know is that there are terrorist organizations growing around the globe, and a US politician set in the motion to reactivate Team Rainbow. That set up the basis of the game, and what we got was one of the most enjoyable first person multiplayer shooters ever made. But as far as that story went, we had a few situations where we were fight these terrorists known as the white masks but for the most part the main focal point of the game was us playing against other online players which the in-universe explanation is that we are doing training missions and as far as we're concerned that is as much story we were going to get they were going to focus on the gameplay and multiplayer side of it and rainbow six siege was not going to be a story driven game unlike other rainbow six titles and that's what they did the game had issues at launch they fixed out those issues they also added frequent new content and they did have lore behind it they gave the operators biographies they gave them personality and they gave them relationships, they're friends with each other, some of them are lovers. And although at this time we were already kind of feeling an attachment to these characters and quickly a lot of them were becoming gaming icons, there still wasn't really a massive story behind it. The white masks still existed so Rainbow were becoming even bigger to help counteract them and we just assumed that they were fighting them in the background and we didn't get to see that. And Ubisoft kept it this way until it seems like they got in quite a good stride. Content was coming out frequently, a lot of the big issues were fixed and the game was as big as ever. And then Ubisoft threw a curveball at us. Director of Team Rainbow, Aurelia Arnaud, gets a promotion, and as well as this, the White Masks have been defeated. This was a massive thing because, firstly, we got our first ever intense CGI animation with the hammer and scalpel, showing us Thatcher and Dokubi having a bit of turmoil with each other, as well as introducing us the new director of Rainbow, Harry. I remember watching this for the first time being absolutely blown away as someone who was just some console player who wasn't even that good at the game, seeing this lifelike animation in a game which had no story behind it as far as I was aware was really intriguing and it just left me wanting more and after this we were start to enter a period in the lore which many people seen as not very good. Ubisoft either got a new team here or the team decided to go in a very new direction but this is when they would start to lean into the esports side of Rainbow Six Siege and try and incorporate that into the story. Basically having our in-universe operators have their own yearly tournament to coincide along the real life tournament of Six Invitational. As well as this a private military organization would start to get involved with Team Rainbow, and we start to get operators who weren't from traditional CTUs, some of them even being unaffiliated. And this is when people would start to get a bit vocal, saying that they thought the white masks were interesting, they would have liked to have seen more about that. A bunch of combined counter-terrorism units fighting this global threat. Instead, they get defeated in the background, and we start to get this private military company coming in, and these yearly training competitions where the public can watch. It doesn't really seem that good holding public events to view a world class counterterrorism unit who a lot of the time are meant to be working from the shadows. Now I didn't absolutely despise this stage, I thought it was stupid having the stadium, I thought having this yearly open to the public event for Rainbow didn't really make much sense in the story and I was quite heavily against that, however we did get pretty cool animations for it and it was them trying to lean into the esports side of the game. As well as this, the introduction of Nighthaven did seem like a way for them just to sort of start adding these more futuristic gadgets, which I think is a really cool explanation, it makes a lot of sense it is pretty realistic, and Nighthaven, in my opinion, turned out to be a really good addition to the game. But this is when Ubisoft, I guess, maybe started to listen to the fans a bit more, or maybe there was some internal discussion of where the story should go, and they started to take it a lot more seriously. It's clear that there was a lot of mistakes made with the stadium, a lot of the stuff around Harry, and it was time to do some course correction. People wanted it to be more grounded and go back to its roots, and although the White Masks have been defeated, it seems like Ubisoft would start to cook up something else. The game lacked something for many years and that was a villain. Whether that's a single person or a group, Rainbow didn't really have anything to fight for. They were sort of just training. So that's when Ubisoft presented us with a new villain, Nighthaven. Nighthaven operators would go against the playbook, such as Kali, and this would cause a lot of criticism from Rainbow operators, such as Ash. This made us as the audience see Nighthaven as a bit reckless, and maybe that there's going to be some issues caused from this. But surely Nighthaven aren't going to be the main antagonist of this game? And although they do act a bit different from Rainbow, they still have good 
intentions at the end of the day, and protecting innocent people is what they stand for. Well, we get hit with another curveball, and Nighthaven leave Rainbow. They're tired of the rules Rainbow is making, and they are going back to working as a private military company without a contract. After all the tension, Nighthaven leave. Although, they weren't really an antagonist. Rather, they just had issues with operators, but again, they weren't really bad. They just worked differently, and now it was over, they went back to working on their own, as well as some Rainbow operators leaving with them. So the moment it started to seem like we were finally getting an antagonist in this story, it turns out they weren't really that bad. Yeah, they are a bit shady, but there isn't going to be any physical conflict and won't really be a force to be reckoned with. That is, however, at the beginning of year seven, we learned that Nighthaven assassinated someone. Okay, this is getting a bit interesting. We know that Nighthaven were a bit shady and didn't really play by the rule books, but we never seen them as bad people. And now some CEO of a data center in Japan has just been assassinated by Nighthaven gear. That must be Nighthaven Ar bad so we do have an antagonist and rainbow get involved since azami the bodyguard of the ceo worked with habana a rainbow operative and with rainbow not long ago working with nighthaven as well as some rainbow operatives now working there they get a bit suspicious and worried that nighthaven are now assassinating people because that's a big thing especially with ex-colleagues working there so rainbow get hot on our tail and us as the audience get over a year of being suspicious of nighthaven now the reason i think this works so well is because a lot of our favorite operators which we play as in the game, you've got Ace, Kali, Aruni, Wamai, Osa, Smoke, IQ, Pulse, Finca, Grim, all these operators are part of Nighthaven, and us as the audience is getting the implication that these operators are part of an assassination ring? You know, this is when myself and a lot of people start to get a bit more interested in the lore. But that is when, at the beginning of Year 8, we get the absolute bombshell that there is a new character called Deimos, who was pulling the strings the whole time, whose intention is to wipe out Rainbow, and was tricking them into thinking that Nighthaven were the bad guys so he could strike them from the shadows. And one of the first strikes which Deimos does is he kills the director of Rainbow, Harry. And one of the biggest issues Deimos has with Harry is the fact that he made Rainbow a joke in his opinion. He's hosting these yearly tournaments to the public. They're not a feared squad anymore, rather a show for people. He's made Rainbow look weak. And what Deimos is saying is the same stuff that R6 community was saying. Rainbow didn't feel like this worldwide counterterrorism unit anymore. Rather, they were playing tournaments and have an internal conflict with a private military. They weren't fighting terrorists, there was no big grip for them to fight against. To a lot of people, it felt like a high school drama. And Ubisoft took this criticism and they made one of the best decisions with it. When you course correct with an ongoing story, there is a massive issue you can make where you just completely disregard what was written previously, which doesn't make the story flow great at all. I think a good example of this is the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. The Last Jedi was a very critical film and there was a lot of complaints about how the story went in that film. So for the movie after that, they done a course correction and basically retconned a bunch of stuff which happened in that movie. This then just disregards a lot of stuff which happened previously, and then you don't really have a coherent story. But what Ubisoft done here was absolutely incredible. They used one of the most critical points in R6 lore, where there was a lot of criticism about it, not a lot of people liked it, and they used that to build up a new character and build the story further. Rather than trying to sweep it under the rug and basically say, look, let's forget that happened, here's a new character and everything, they've made a new character who uses that bit which people don't like of the story as his motive to kill Harry and basically sort Rainbow out. This gives him more depth as a character but as well as that, that keeps the weakest part of the story relevant to the story and actually one of the most crucial parts. If we didn't have the stadium, the weak points of this story, we wouldn't have Deimos. Deimos wouldn't have motive. That wouldn't make him an interesting villain. It wouldn't up the stakes. But since we have that weak part of the story, that allows you to use that and and the criticism which the audience was given use that as the villain's motive, which then helps build up the stronger part of the story. That means now when you look back at the weak part, you can say, you know what, I understand why Deimos is doing that. I can see the criticism here, and I can see where Harry and these operators have messed up. Here is where they let their guard down, here is where they made some mistakes, and here is how it is going to backfire on them. Now as well as this, we do know that Deimos is ex-Rainbow, so his story does go back even before these points. I believe he is in that sort of grey area before the last Rainbow game and Rainbow Six Siege, where there was meant to be another game made, but it got cancelled. We made a video about that the other day. I believe he is from that era of Rainbow, and we do know at the end of that era, Rainbow does get deactivated for whatever reason, and I believe there is a story to tell there. But I just think what they've done with this story is one of the best ways you can do a course correction. Rather than trying to retcon everything you've done before, which people didn't like, rather trying to sweep it under the rug, you embrace it, you admit you made a mistake there, and you show how those mistakes have an impact on the story going forward. They could have easily just introduced the White Mask 
back or a similar group and had Harry say to like Sam Fisher and be like, whoa, those stadium events we done, maybe they weren't a great idea since we showed off a lot of our training to the public and these bad guys saw it and they know how we operate. Maybe that wasn't our best idea, but let's take down these bad guys. You know, that's like a really bad course correction because you're basically just saying, hey, remember when we made those decisions? Let's disregard them. And you know, oops, we done that. No, we have a brand new villain now who literally kills Harry for making decisions such as that. And now we have continuing side effects and consequences because of that. And it's helped shape the story going forward. It gave the story much more depth. We still have conflict with Nighthaven. We know they're not bad, but a lot of the operators still aren't on good terms. Do Rainbow need Nighthaven's help? We don't know yet. We have new recruits coming into the game who are directly linked to Deimos, which probably would never have existed if it wasn't for the stadium. So the lowest point in the story has set up the highest point. And for that, you've got to give the team credit because they could have botched that even more. And I just find that a lot more interesting now because there's finally a reason for Rainbow to fight. For so long, we never really had an antagonist. The White Masks were defeated. We were just told and assumed that Rainbow went on missions in the background, but didn't really fight high level threats. But now we have a villain. There's mystery behind them because we don't know what ex-operative he is. He isn't part of our main roster of Siege. He's before that time. We don't know if he's an existing Rainbow Six character. We don't know if he's a new one. We don't know if they're going to make a separate game spinning him off and, you know, setting him up. And we don't know what he's truly capable of. Have we only seen a fraction of what he can do? All I do know is the year nine cinematic we're going to get is going to be absolutely insane. So be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how Deimos basically saved Rainbow Six lore and how they could have really, you know, just made it worse, but they'd done an absolutely amazing job of course correcting and embodying a lot of the criticism of the community into a brand new villain makes so much sense. So be sure to drop a like on this video, dislike it if you do not, subscribe if you are new, and I shall catch you later. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.